All right, so here's the idea. You know that in any major or minor key, we have a set of naturally occurring chords. We call these the diatonic chords of the key. In a major key, this order goes major, minor, minor, major, major, minor, diminished. This is true for every major key. If this is not something you're familiar with, it's really worth looking up. The idea being that there are naturally occurring chords in a key, seven of them for seven notes in the scale, and then we can flip the polarity of these chords, meaning all the majors become minors and the minors become majors. That's what I mean by polarity flipping, and that's the point of today's video, is that without even thinking too much about theory, we can just take this idea of, if, I, if we know the diatonic chords of a key, we can just flip the polarity on all of them and get a set of new possibilities that we can work with that actually kind of just sound good almost all the time. And the same thing goes for minor keys. The naturally occurring chords of a minor scale can also be flipped to their inverse or their whatever opposite polarity, and you can put them into chord progressions as well. Uh, not all the time. You wouldn't want to use it every chord because you're going to get some strange effects by doing that, but occasionally you put one in and it makes a big difference. So you can take a systematic look at these things just by saying, we're going to go start on the one chord and then go to the next chord, but it's polarity flipped version. For instance, one, two minor. Now we're going one, sorry, two major. Then we're going instead of one, three, going one, three major. Quite a sound. One to four. One, four minor. For the sake of this video, we're going to leave off the sevens, although because they're diminished and it's not really like an easy way to just say flip the polarity on that. In a minor key, it's the same process. So if we're starting on A minor now, um, again, we're going to omit the diminished chord. We're going to go to the flat three chord, which would normally be C. So we have one, flat three. So this would become flat three minor. Then normally we'd have one four. Now four major, it's a polarity flip. Going from the one chord to the other chord in the key and then flipping its uh, polarity. So you see, we can take just basic progressions even and just flip any of them basically into their opposite polarity and we get interesting effects that are just not accessible when you're just working with the standard diatonic chords of the key. Now to expand on the idea, there's two pathways that should be used in conjunction. The first is inversions and this is big. We're saying that, okay, we can take these naturally occurring chords and we can flip their polarity, but we can also then when they are flipped or when they're natural, use them in inversions to get new bass notes out of them and get slightly different sounds and allow for different kinds of bass movement, which is uh, what we're particularly interested in here. So if we're back in major for a second, if we say take the um, two chord, which we said could be flipped from minor to major, we could, instead of putting the D in the bass, we could put its third in the bass, F sharp. It's fifth. So that's a really basic example. We're just taking one chord to another, but when you start to chain a few chords together, you can get some particularly interesting ideas. So we talked about one possibility of making this more interesting, uh, which was inversions, and then the other possibility is adding extensions to these chords, meaning sevenths, ninths, elevenths, and so on. And the kind of rule of thumb about how, about which extensions to add or which ones will work is you try to keep as many notes of the home key static as you can. So if we're in C, going to that two chord, we wanna add um, extensions to this chord. The extensions we're gonna add aren't gonna come from the key of D, they're gonna come from the key of C where, where we just were. So in that case, the extensions that will work are gonna be all the white notes except for the one that got changed. In this case, the D minor became D major. So the note that's getting changed is the F is becoming an F sharp. 
So the other notes are all fair game to add. A G, a B, a C, an E, all of those can be added to our chord. This is C major 9 to D9. Right? All that is possible. And that's the general idea for the rest of these sounds as well. Going 1 to 6 major. The extensions are going to be the rest of the white notes, so it's natural 9, it's 11, um, <laughs> it's flat 13, and it's uh, flat 7. Let's take a look at some progression ideas about how you could actually use this stuff. For now, we'll just start with, say, a given basic progression and then try doing some polarity flips in it. So, for instance, if we're in C, we could do one, five, two, four, right? That sort of sound, kind of a common thing. And then let's say we take the uh, five chord and flip it. So now the five chord's minor instead of major. So now how about instead of the five, we'll flip the four. That's five minor, two is natural, minor, and four is minor. Now how about we flip the two? That's some ideas, right? So we're taking a standard progression that we already like or just know, and then starting to flip some of those chords around. So now instead of just starting with a given progression, we can just actually write with this stuff in mind. We don't, have to, we don't have to convert some like standard progression and then flip some polarities. We can just start writing progressions with the idea of flipping polarities in general and find our way around uh, using different routes, uh, different pathways. So for instance, we'll go to A minor this time and let's just start trying stuff. So for instance, you might want to have um, descending bass. That's obviously a common move. So if we're here on the A and we start working down, we have the options of either dropping down diatonically to this guy or dropping down uh, chromatically here. So if we drop down to here, you know, we have options like this could just be a G chord, which is standard. It could be a G minor, which is a polarity flipped. It could be a C chord inverted. Could be an E chord inverted, right? That's a bunch of possibilities, all for this one note right here. Uh, could even be C minor inverted, which is C minor is one of our flip polarity notes. It's quite a sound. <laughs> now we can also go down chromatically to this note, and this note's not part of any of the diatonic chords, the natural chords, but it is part of some of the uh, polarity flipped chords. So if we think about that, for instance, the E minor touches that G sharp when we flip it to E major. F gets it in the other way when the A comes down to an A flat like that, right? So we can try either of those two. So for instance, we're on A and we come down to E over G sharp. Or how about F? We'll go with the F. And then if we continue, we get this G. Again, this could just be a G chord, or it could be C over G. Let's go with that. Now, if we continue going down, may as well, we get this note, which is not part of the original key, but it is part of this D. We would normally have a D minor there, but instead we have a D major, which we could invert to be over top of this bass note. So we have our one chord, we have our flat six, inverted, we've got the flat three chord, C, and then we've got our inverted four chord here. It's polarity flipped, so we, like this. Naturally, that's going to lead down to just the flat six chord. And then here, uh, we could go back to a G and end on A. So our bass line went 
walking down chromatically, walking back up diatonically. We can extend some of the chords. They don't have to all just be triads. So we could instead play like, and then this could be F minor major seven. So this was e, A minor nine, F minor major nine, uh, minor major seven, sorry. Then this could just be a C uh, add nine over E. I'm just adding extensions from the home key to each of these chords. Then this uh, D over F sharp could be 13. The F major nine, then a G add nine. We'll go to A major here. Then right back down to the F. down to C over E, C minor, D minor, and now we've got our way back to home with a two, five, one sort of thing here. I'm just weaving my way through the key, mixing regular natural chords with these polarity flipped versions, adding extensions, plotting roots, sometimes thinking in the bass, sometimes thinking in the chord type itself. You're just kind of seeing what's around and trying things. So if these sounds pique your interest, you like them, then it's worth studying. It's worth trying to understand what the origin of them is. Why is it that this particular change, one to five minor or whatever, uh, sounds so good, as opposed to just saying it's just a polarity flip Maybe you start studying modal interchange or something like this to understand the actual origin of those chords and why they work in this key. That's a great place to go because then it starts to open up even more doors, <laughs> but there's so many doors to open. That's why I kind of just stuck with this simple explanation for today because you can already do so much with just thinking about flipping the polarity of the natural chords. That's it, hope you liked the video. If you did, please leave it a like and subscribe to the channel. Uh, I have some courses that are available in the description of the video if you want to learn some more from me about theory and composition. And I have a Discord server where we talk all about theory and music production and have music production challenges every couple of weeks there as well. If you want to join up with that, the link's also in the description. Thanks so much and hope you have a great day.